I looked at the security footage, and there she was, with a baseball bat in hand, destroying my furniture, absolutely undeterred by the alarm blaring. Welcome back to They Did What? Your source for the internet's craziest, most entertaining stories, where I go over them, analyze them, and most certainly make fun of them. Today, I'm going to go over a story titled... Wacko X came back in my life after five years of radio silence, and it's making me crazy. And guys, this story is about a guy, it's a long story, but definitely worth your time, who, X, definitely lost it mentally and emotionally prior to their breakup. And before all that, she was making him crazy, and it got so bad that he had to get out of there, it was affecting his emotional mental health. And you're going to see she completely goes nuts before, and especially goes nuts afterwards. However, this whole thing ends with a lot of red flags and warnings for all you guys about relationships, and you're going to see she gets hers in the end. And I'd be going to go over here, guys, just as a reminder to show you there are a lot of mentally unstable people out there, both women and men, and you be very careful about who you let into your life, certainly in your bed. And that being said, says here, uh, I, a 45-year-old male, now, met Sarah, a 47-year-old female, back in 2018. Okay, so he's 45 and she's 47 right now, but back in 2018, six years ago, he was 39 and she was 41. Okay. Because of many, many past issues, I was not looking for any type of relationship, just a casual fling. She was okay with that, mentioning that she wasn't looking for anything serious either. We were both child-free. Yeah, what a load of crap. How many guys have said that to gals and they're like, oh, me too, I don't want any kids, I don't want a relationship, and then their actions prove otherwise. In early November that year, the condom broke. We both got tested and we were clean. To our shock, she was pregnant, of course. We decided to keep it and became a couple. We started making plans to sell our condos and buy a bigger one together. Look at all that after just one condom breaking, guys. Right there, <laughs> one condom breaking changes everything. A lot of you guys are thinking, hmm, did she get a hold of that condom before he put it on? Think about that. In late January, the Friday before the first trimester echo, we went to the restaurant and had a nice meal. It was snowing outside, and when we came out, she slipped on a patch of ice under a small snow pile and fell on her behind. I helped her up and asked her if she was okay, and she laughed it off and said it hurt her ego more than anything. Well, she's 40 years old. She's in that high-risk pregnancy stage, and you can't take a fall lightly. I said that with her being in a geriatric pregnancy, we should go to the hospital to see if everything was all right. She didn't appreciate the geriatric part I threw in there and became uh, a little annoyed and uh, made it clear to not go to the hospital. I insisted a few times, but she said no and started getting a little pissy with me for insisting, so I dropped the issue. Bad idea, dude. That's your kid in there. Well, we think it's your kid in there. She's 40 years old and she slipped and fell. You can't take any chances. So I helped her up and asked her if she's okay, and she laughed off and said it hurt her ego more than anything. Blah blah. Oh, I read that part. So we went to her place and talked for a little while before going to sleep. While we were sleeping, I was the big spoon. At a clock, about three o'clock in the morning, I woke up and thought she was sleeping, but I, then I felt her sobbing. I hugged her, and when I moved a little closer, I felt wetness in her lower regions, and it clicked into place for me right away, and I was wide awake now. Holy crap! She's having a miscarriage. I hugged her tighter and said it was going to be all right. She started full on ugly crying, turning towards me and buried her head on my shoulder. I held her for a few minutes. Well, this is terrible. And I'm sorry for him and I'm sorry for her and, they, and you know, all that. And this guy was right when he said we should have gone to the hospital. She should have listened to reason and he should have absolutely put his foot down here. As a side note, it was the fourth pregnancy I was responsible for that ended in a miscarriage. Though it was the first time I was actually there when it happened the fourth time dude okay you should never ever <laughs> at this point you, sh you should have had a vasectomy because obviously there's something wrong with your sperm <clears throat> the other three had started when the X's were working in my head the best thing for me to do is to keep my head uh, level up to help her through it I figured she was allowed to freak out and I should take care of, of, of things so after a few minutes I told her that we should go to the hospital to get her checked out Okay, this is when you need to be strong, dude, and be the man in the issue because she's melting down. And honestly, it's understandable. 
She didn't say anything to me. She was basically catatonic in shock. I helped her up and took her to the bathroom. Of course, the bed sheets ourselves were pretty much covered in you know what. And I took her to the shower, cleaned her up, dried her off, put on her fresh clothes, including a pad. I dressed myself in the spare clothes I kept at her place, and we took a cab to the hospital, even if it was only a five-minute walk away. Good, bro. You're handling this as you should. The hospital couldn't do much but acknowledge what we knew, that she had miscarried. They would need to perform a DNC as she was 12 weeks pregnant, and they wanted to make sure that there, there wouldn't be any complications and she needed blood transfusion as she was anemic from the blood loss. And they did that. Uh, after the transfusion, she asked if they could give her something to help her sleep. They told her not yet as they had to make sure she had no adverse reaction to the transfusion for the next hour. An hour later, they gave her an opioid to help her rest and get sleep. They told me she should be out of it for a few hours, and I was welcome to stay in the room with her. I decided to go back to her condo to clean up the mess that we left while she slept. I hand-washed the clothes and the bed sheets as much of it as I could and threw them in the washer. You know, at this point, he may have to get a new mattress. I cleaned the blood off the floor, the shower, the toilet, and the mattress. When the washer was done, I threw the stuff in the dryer. I placed new sheets in the bed, new towels in the bathroom, and went back to the hospital. She was still asleep when I got back. I sat down in the chair next to her, to her gurney. When she woke up, we talked, and she felt somewhat better physically. She asked me if I had stayed in the room with her the whole time, and I told her no, and what I had done. Apparently, that was the wrong thing to do, and she started berating me for leaving. Yeah, not cool. Now, understandably, she's messed up by this. Fair enough. You know, emotional and heartbroken and all that. I can't understand it because I'm a guy, so I, I, you know, for obvious reasons, but... This guy's doing what he had to do. She shouldn't be berating him. I told her I thought I was doing a good thing to make your return home more comfortable and less traumatic by not having those reminders there when she would get there. See, he's being logical. as he, The man needs to be, and she's being emotional. She said she didn't feel supported. So here we go. And here's the thing. If the guy would have stayed with her, I will to bet you they'd go home, and she would have been like, why didn't you go home and clean that up? So already he's in a lose-lose situation. This is the moment of the cycle of verbal abuse began. She started berating me for leaving, for not catching her when she slipped, for making us go to the restaurant during her pregnancy, for choosing that poor excuse for a restaurant, didn't sit, didn't salt their entrance to make sure the guest didn't slip. It is not your fault that you wanted to go out to eat. It is not your fault that she slipped. It's not your fault that you didn't catch her. But she wants to blame it all on... It's easier to blame it all on you than to accept that sadly in life bad things happen and that ain't cool and you shouldn't have to put up with that a lot of guys think they should put up with it and be strong for their woman no there's there's being strong for her like you were when you gathered things up put her in the shower took her to the hospital cleaned things up but letting her abuse you that way no 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 she's allowed to be heartbroken and depressed and sad and upset but not attack her guy like this who's been there for her since she had gone through the physical and psychological trauma of the miscarriage and I was only dealing with the sadness of it, I felt like I was just a way for her to deal with her grief, so I decided to take it and not re react too much. Smack! You thought you were doing the right thing, but that wasn't the right thing. You are only enabling her behavior. She then accused me of being cold when it happened instead of being an emotional wreck like she was because I was still able to function while she shut down. He had to be strong for her. If he, was shot, if he was breaking down too, then she'd be mad at him for not being strong enough for her. Again, lose-lose situation. I told her that if, it, if I hadn't helped her, she could have bled out or been in worse shape by the time she got to the hospital. She told me I don't need a hero to save me, and she's not a weak, defenseless woman. Basically, anything I said was the wrong thing to say. What'd I tell you? Lose-lose situation. This is why when you're dealing with somebody that's crazy or running on pure emotion, you're not going to win. I would have left at this point because he still has his own kind of like, you know what? I'm doing everything I can for you. I've been strong for you and you're going to now berate me. I'm out of here. You call me when you're going to start treating me like the, the kind, loving person I thought you were prior to all this happening. This is a terrible situation. We're going to get through this together. But I'm not going to stick around and have you blame me for everything and shit on me. I'm out of here. And if she gets mad, she gets mad. I thought it was just a phase that would blow over and I let it slide and took it. I thought I was strong enough mentally to take it. Bad idea, dude. But it got to me, and I started falling into depression. She would hurl all sorts of verbal abuse my way, and I would react less and less as I cared less and less. 
I think she was trying to get a reaction on me to be able to play the victim if I reacted violently towards her. I thought about leaving, but in all honesty, I didn't want to be the a-hole that breaks up with her soon after her miscarriage. Smack! Don't light yourself on fire to keep somebody else warm. That's what this guy's doing. Again, she's allowed to be depressed, sad, and all that, but to put up with this, you're not being the better guy here. And if you left her when she's being like this, and some people got mad at you, who cares? You were strong for her. <clears throat> when I stopped reacting altogether, that's when she started with the slaps and other forms of physical abuse. Now she's attacking him. Now he absolutely should leave. But I was so deep in my depression at that point that I didn't defend myself. I know I'm a weak-ass bitch for that, but what are you going to do? This guy was so worn down. Remember, he also lost his kid there. He, he obviously has reason to be sad. We, we think it's his kid. One thing I should note now is that I'm a, I'm a type 1 diabetic and take insulin every day to regulate my blood sugar and other medicine to help with other issues. As I was falling deeper and deeper into my depression, I stopped caring about my, my medication and my health. Terrible idea, dude. After three months of abuse and depression, my physical health was that bad. If not worse, my mental health. At the beginning of May, I went to the ER as I was falling, feeling very ill. Kidney pains, blurred vision, swollen legs, and bad infection in my back, to name a few issues. Holy crap, dude. When I checked into the ER, I turned off my phone and didn't tell anybody I was there. The doctor started treating me. I also got to talk to a shrink when they asked me why I stopped taking my medication and said I just didn't feel like it. Bro, because you're, you obviously were slowly trying to kill yourself. That was my probably, my probably godsend and it helped me see the cycle of abuse and depression I had fallen into. After 48 hours in the ER, they finally found a bed for me and I was admitted. 48 hours... 48 hours took me to find a bed. Man, 10 years ago, guys, I had, I got a appendicitis. And my girl from the time was a lawyer. And she came with me to the ER. And this was around 8 o'clock at night. I went to the doctor. They said basically I had appendicitis because I was having pain down there. I was going to have my appendix out. And uh, they were told me that I got the ER by 8 o'clock at night in Boston. Boston, Mass General, if you guys Boston folks know this. And they told me, oh, we're not going to be able to have a surgery for you until probably tomorrow morning. And we won't be able to get a room to you in the middle of the night, you know, and all that type of thing. Appendicitis, guys. Not a good thing when your appendix bursts. And I was with my lawyer girlfriend at the time, and she was with me. And I said, and they were giving me documentation. I said, well, I'm going to let my lawyer read these things. And the second I said lawyer, like that. Magically, they got a nice room for me. And magically, they suddenly could do the surgery at like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night as opposed to the next morning. They brought in the emergency because they don't mess around when there's a lawyer involved. So they can, believe me, they can make things happen if they really want to. This guy waited 48 hours to get a freaking bed. Crazy. So for any of you guys that know lawyers, use the lawyer card. True story, 10 years ago. Anyway, <clears throat> after another three days, I finally felt mentally better enough to open my phone. I had missed so many calls and messages from her. I called my parents to tell them what happened and my mother answered the phone. She was worried about me because Sarah had told her I hadn't responded to her messages. I told her I was incredibly sick and in the hospital right now. I told her which hospital room number I was in and asked her not to give any information to Sarah and that she told our family to make sure that they don't give her any information to Sarah and that I would have to explain myself if she came to meet me. I sent Sarah a voice note. I'm in the hospital because of your crazy ass and I don't ever want to see you again. When I get out of the hospital, I will pack your things in my condo and send them to you. Whatever clothes or other items of mine I may have at your place, you can throw away or burn if you want. I do not want or need them. Thank the Lord. This guy practically, a few more weeks of this, he could have been dead. All because he, you know, he felt so bad and he fell into depression. So people fall into depression, guys. It happens. But he didn't do what he had to do to take care of himself and he let her wear him down and she again what happened to her is terrible but also impacted him and he didn't freaking attack abuse her you know she's awful awful person and he should have been out of there right away certainly defending himself but anyhow what's done is done she's toast uh she sent a few replies but i never listened to them or, or replied I didn't want to block her because I wanted the messages in case she decided to get nasty and I could go to the police to get a restraining order or something like that. I asked the nurses if there was a way to flag my file as to not give out any info, my room number, or my status to anyone by phone or in person. I was just trying to get away from my abusive ex. They told me that it was possible and they added the flag to my file. She never came to visit me in the hospital, so I took it as a good sign. 
I got out of the hospital six weeks later. Holy crap. Thanks to a great group of insurance packages at work, I was on sick leave for seven months at almost my full salary and was able to go back to work in December of 2019. I packed her crap and sent it to her, but never heard back from her until now. Well, that's great. But uh, now, five years later, here we go. He says, the situation, so we're fast forwarding in time. He says, sorry for all the background info. I realize it's a lot, but I had to explain the situation for you to understand what happened and how I feel. After everything that happened, I, I just solidified my desire to remain single, preferring to focus on a simple life. I call it living just north and neutral. Some pleasures, a good meal, good show or movie, good game. And if it felt like I would have, have a, if it felt if I felt sad, I would only be a little sad. I had a couple of friends with benefits to help satisfy my need for physical contact. Yeah, after what he's been through, clearly he's destined to not be in a relationship since she solidified that. In February 2024, both my friends of benefits had met a new guy, each had a new guy, and they did not and they did not meet the same guy, and they wanted to make it work with them. I wish them the best of luck. <clears throat> we stopped our association. Notice that little detail, guys. He had girls that were friends with benefits. But yet they obviously wanted relationships when they were ready. So but they're more than fun, happy having a friends with benefits him, and he was with them, and he sent them on their on their merry way until they found their guy to settle with. Do you think these guys that these gals got in relationships with knew that they had a friend benefit relationship with another guy? Probably not. A little detail. So I joined Tinder at that time. It went on a few dates. Tinder. So, you're, so you want to get involved more wackos? A week later, I matched with a woman I'll call Maria, 46 years old. We started chatting, and the vibe seemed really good. We had some interest in common and decided to meet for coffee to see where it would lead. The date was set for today at around noon. So he's writing this the same day that all this shit went down. This this story, I believe, was published on Reddit about three weeks ago. At 12.10 that day, she sent me a message saying that she couldn't make it and we should try another time. So you guys stood up. As I left the cafe, I saw Sarah across the street looking straight at me. It didn't feel like a coincidence and I'm convinced the bee had catfished me. She did. She found you on there. And she was trying to get to you. I took off like a bat out of hell. I'm not in the greatest physical shape, but I was running for my life. Okay, let's not get carried away, dude. Obviously, you got trauma, but seriously. I looked back and she was running after me. Fuck. <laughs> well, unless she had a chainsaw or a samurai sword or, or weapon, or some sort of weapon, you know. Thankfully, I know my city very well. I entered a shop that I knew fed to an underground network of tunnels that went off in multiple directions, I managed to lose her in there. An underground network of tunnels? What the hell are you talking about? Are you talking about the subway? Secret passages? Since I never moved from my old condo, I, I, I knew she knew where I lived. I figured I would try to beat her there. I rushed home and she was not there. Less than five minutes later, my phone rings and it's the door intercom letting me know someone wants to come in. I answered hello, and Sarah says, I want to talk. I, nope, out of the call and without unlocking the door. So, she could have reached out to you any time. Now she's showing up magically five years later. And don't you think it's going to be her? Why would you answer that? She calls back again, again, and again. I don't answer. <coughs> Normally, I'd block the number, but I can't with this phone number as I need it for when I have visitors or deliveries. After maybe 12 calls, I finally answer again and tell her, if you don't stop, I'll call the cops, and hung up. And she stopped calling. I would have called the cops anyway to make a report about this whole thing, so when more future shit goes down, there's a, a record of her showing up and bugging you, bugging you, and you telling her to leave. Thankfully, the security system in our building, while not 100% foolproof, had enough safeguards to place in place to prevent j people just like from her walking in and knocking on doors. Maria sent me a message on Tinder saying, please, I just want to talk. Confirming my suspicion that my match was her, I had matched and deleted Tinder. Well, that's what you get for going on Tinder. A few hours later, I had errands to run. I pick up my bags and leave my apartment. I go down to the lobby of my building and I see her sitting on the bench across the street from my building and now I feel trapped in my building and don't know what to do. Well, of course she's sitting out there. She's been stalking you for years. I sent an email to the company that manages my condo building to ask if I have need of it, would they be able to have the security camera footage available to me for my own protection? I'm waiting to hear on that. 
I also sent a text message to a couple of friends of mine that I might need them as backup if and when I decide to finally confront her, they're on standby. Well, you're going to need them more just to verify you didn't do anything and she makes some accusations. Again, I unless I don't see her, you're not saying she has like a freaking chainsaw or a sword or some kind of, of course she can have a little dagger hidden away in her freaking purse or something, but you get, but I, but, you, but the point is she isn't behaving in a way that she's going to do something, but then again, you never know. I went back to the lobby later and I didn't see her across the street anymore. I wonder if I should just involve the police or not. Thankfully, I work from home three days a week and I don't need to go to the office until Tuesday. I will talk to my boss to see if I could change it as the situation evolves. Thanks for reading this so far. It felt like good to type it out. I will update you when I can. Now we're going to get on to his update here, what things happened to her. And yes, indeed, she is nuts. But this guy can't live hidden away in his place forever here. He says, it's been a week since my last post and a lot has happened. I'm only posting today because I've been celebrating for the past 48 hours. If you haven't read this post before, uh, he goes into a whole little recap here. On Monday, I walked from home. I worked from home to make sure I didn't have to go out and risk running into her. At around 2 p.m., there was a knock on my apartment door. I looked through the people, and there she was. Um, what happened to security not letting people in? I don't know how she managed to bypass the building security system and came to my floor without ringing her up. I didn't answer the door, and she kept knocking. At one point, she started fiddling with the door handle. Oh, now she's trying to break in? Call the police. And also, it's time to uh, get the security fired for not seeing her come in. After our relationship, I changed the locks in case she made a copy of my keys. I called 911 to report someone attempting to break into my apartment and wanted her to get trespass from the building. She heard me talking on the phone and banged the door yelling, You fucking idiot! Why did you call the police? I just want to talk. I didn't reply and she banged one last time and left. Well, guess what? He doesn't want to talk. If this was a guy behaving in this way towards a woman, can you imagine how this whole thing would be playing out different? Uh, eventually, the police got there and I told them what happened, gave them her info, and told them about our condo board if they needed any footage. I asked if there was anything I could do to get a restraining order. They said that since she, all she did was knock on my door, there wasn't much that they could do. If the situation was reversed, you know darn well that would have been handled differently. Come on here. She wasn't supposed to be in the building. She snuck in, got past security. That's in itself a problem. She's banging on their, you know, giving them a hard time. I contacted my best friend and packed my clothes and electronics and went to live in her place until this dies down. Before leaving, I made sure that my apartment security system, including a video camera, was activated and I stayed there for a whole week. <sighs> you can't run forever, man. My phone rang from time to time with her trying to get me to open the door for her, but I never answered. So she's back in your place. It's bad enough the security screwed up the first time, but she's back in there building again. Whoever's in charge of security needs to be fired. Whoever's on duty then for security needs to be fired here. And you could probably potentially sue the building. This takes us to Tuesday or Thursday. I went to work in the office as my friend also works from home and didn't have space for both of us to work comfortably. I didn't want to impose any more than I should, so I went to the office. Around 11 p.m. or 1 p.m., I get a call from my alarm company saying the alarm went off my apartment and wanted to know if it was me. I said, no, it's not me. Could they send the cops? I looked at the security footage and there she was with a baseball bat destroying my furniture, absolutely undeterred by the alarm blaring. Yeah, the bitch is crazy now, obviously. I want to know how she was she's going was she just walking down the street with a baseball bat? I mean seriously, maybe she bought a baseball bat at night, hid it in the bushes, and then she snuck into the building. How is she sneaking into this building so many times it's supposed to have security here? I mean this is ridiculous. The one time one okay, but after the, the first time? Really? And here she is. I told my boss to show him the footage. He told me to go handle my business and not worry about anything work-related for now. I walked back home. I worked 10 minutes from the apartment. While watching the phone, I saw the police get there, and I saw her take a swing at the cops with a baseball bat. Wrong move. They took her away. I got there as they were, they were putting her in the squad car. I just smiled and waved at her. Oh, she's going to freak. They tried to she tried to break free from the cops and rush at me, but they were holding her tightly, and she didn't go anywhere. Yeah, now she's going to be someone... That, now, now there's going to be bystanders recording it and saying, Oh, look what they're doing to her! Those mean cops. They told her to stop, or they'd add another court, or a restri another count of resisting arrest to her growing list of charges. I went into the building, and the cops wouldn't let me go up, as there was a crime scene. 
I told them I'm the owner of the unit in question and they sent me to, to talk to the cops that were on the scene. After showing my ID and proof of residence the cop, to the cop inside my door, he waved me in. I walked into the massacre. I was glad I had taken my most important electronics because everything else was smashed and shattered. I'm going to say what everybody else is thinking. Bitches be crazy. My glass table, my monitors, my TV, every fixture in the, in the kitchen and bathroom. They turned the water off to prevent further damage. Later on, I talked to a detective, gave them the security footage from the camera. She says, strengthened the case, but given that four cops had seen her destroying stuff and had a base, bat swung at them, there wasn't much hope for her. My ex is going away for a long time, it looks like, and I couldn't be happier. Please, she's just going to go to the loony bin. She's not going to do jail time or prison time. No, because it's going to all, all go back to what happened to her, the miscarriage, and she lost her mind. And again, that was terrible what happened to her, but it doesn't excuse her actions here. And I'm willing to bet you, like, people, it can be proven that she's acted, she's functioned quite fine prior to this whole thing going down with this guy here. She's showing that she's mentally able to trick him on Tinder and meet up with him, and she's calculating and all So She's not so crazy. She's just an asshole. I'm also talking to her lawyer as I want to sue her for all damages and punitive damages for everything she puts me through. Well, good luck with that if she doesn't have the money. Hopefully this concludes the episode. I have a lot of things to repair, new stuff to buy. I also have to find a perfect gift for my best friend to thank her for helping me out with everything and being such a rock star. So there, there you go, guys. Like I said, you be careful who you let in your life, especially in your bedroom. And you pay attention to the red flags and get out of there when there's danger. And you should never take put up with the abuse just because you got to feel like you're the strong man in the situation. And But she is now arrested. they got plenty of footage of her. And hopefully she does some prison time, but probably it'll be a first offense. And she'll just claim the whole claim insanity or something. Her slick lawyer will get her off, and that'll be that. But anyhow, guys, that'll be a good one here. And again, yeah, this guy, I hope he tries to sue her. But if she doesn't have any money to her name, good luck getting that. But uh, in my opinion, it's time for him to move. Because that building, because he obviously owns his condo apartment in the building. And they obviously have security there. That's the HOA handles. It's time for him to sue them. It was bad enough the first time, but having the second, third time she gets through, regardless, they he, the, he, he has a case against them. I'm not even a fucking lawyer here. All right, guys, that's it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me, let me know what you think about this. Be sure to like the video. Share with your friends and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.